All right, are we ready, Bonnie? Are we ready? All right. Hey, okay. Uh, Look at it. Is it pressed for play? Yeah, it's Record? working. Okay. Let me check. Yes, we're working. We're rolling. Uh, we did a whole episode yesterday of this show and realized afterwards that... It was there, on pause. Yeah, the recorder was on pause the whole time, so who knows how long we'd actually, actually been talking. We're going to try to reconstruct that conversation as much as we can, but I don't know. Hmm. Why don't you begin with anything you might remember, Bonnie? At my age? You expect me to remember? I know one of the things we talked about was how shitty the old place was. Oh God, was it ever. So we live on what's now five acres of land. And next to us is our old shitty place. And we're in our nice new place. New relative. We're 21 years in the house. And um, the old place was um, 72, 74? No, it was 80 or 81. Somewhere in there. 80, 81, the 82. I pulled the paperwork just this week. Anyway, um, all your things are in storage over there. And I expect them to be covered in mold at this point. All the humidity. Well, <clears throat> the old place is where I store all my paintings, and it is a moldy, wet mess over there with animals coming in and rain pouring through the roof. And <clears throat> at some point, my mother inherited or got some place my her brother was living in, and it had been cobbled together. It was like a in pieces anyway one of the pieces were still good it was like an add-on room missing one wall so plus she, an attached porch yeah plus it had a, a porch attached to it anyway so my mother had some people come over and add it to our place all we had to do was uh modify a window into a door right and that door now is leaking over the top where we cut the window out anyway that that room became the kids room and it's full now of um, paintings, right? There might be some paintings in. I think most of the paintings are in the the, the bulk of the house. Because when we moved out of there, I gutted the entire interior. I, I ripped out all the carpet, all the all the cabinets and and uh, counters and all that. And that whole huge kitchen slash living room area is storage for paintings now. And um, but there's those big rubber made. Uh, containers full of papers and drawings and there's rubber made containers for the full of the kids old toys and all kinds of junk over there there's no telling um, it's horrible yeah and um, when we moved in we st still had a telephone pole put in up against the back of the house with a giant television antenna on top of it with the old channel master uh, rotating gizmo for the antenna and when they put the port when they put that new room on it where it was going to go the porch went right up against that telephone pole so they had to cut part of the porch out and to fit it around the telephone pole but um when I think of all the money that was spent on that place, the roof that was put on it, that add-on place, all the plumbing that had to be corrected over the years, we could have had a huge down payment on this place. Yeah. As is, we, we scrambled to get the 20% down for this place. Yeah. Um, Bonnie put, Bonnie installed a wall divider down the middle of the room, so one half would be Peter's and one half would be Reed's. And um, when P when Reed was little and going off to kindergarten, first grade, Peter would stay home with Bonnie, and they would sit on that back porch with their legs lying dangling off the side and drink root beer together. And now that whole area is overgrown. Careful. Um, <clears throat> I remember Peter got it in his head because he'd always see Homer drinking root beer, um, beer on The Simpsons, and we had root beer that was the same brown bottles and Peter go, I'm beer I want a beer so we would sit on the back porch drinking root beer and here he was thinking he had a beer like Homer Simpson <laughs> yeah 
Um, I remember when I first drank beer thinking, what an odd taste. It, it tastes metallic. I had pony beers for the first time with my dad. I was maybe 10, 11 years old. And um, I remember forcing myself to drink it because I wanted to be a big person, you know. But I remember thinking, I don't really care for this stuff. I've never really developed that much of a taste for it, except for the dragon blood stuff that Peter introduced me two years ago. And that was amazing because the beer was made in cask that Brandy had been in. Mm -hmm. And then when you poured it, you poured it into an actual Brandy snifter so that the foam would come out just right. And the smell of it was amazing. So whatever the dragon's blood or something, I forget what it was. That was the only beer I really liked. Um, I think my favorite beer was uh, St. Pauli Girl Dark. That was probably the best beer I've ever had in my life. Um, I used to go and get a black and tan at the Globe every once in a while. And then I would have Rolling Rock. And last time we went out for our anniversary, we went to the pizza place, Pepino's downtown. I got some kind of beer they had on. I don't remember. Bottles there, and I ended up getting a second bottle. I remember for some reason, um, I think Udy's was like this. Uh, Udy's was a sandwich shop downtown a long time ago. Starbucks is there now. But they and some other places would have specials on pictures of Killian's Red. Whoa. It was a big deal back then. I don't know yeah. why. And, you know, when I... When I was drinking, I never understood the appeal of the pitcher. Oh, you get more beer for the money. No, not really. Well, we used to get pitchers down at um, Georgia Bar. It was $3 pitchers. Mm -hmm. And we'd always order light because, you know, gay people, you know, go for light beers. I don't know why. And we would go through a couple of those because we would be snarfing on the uh, free popcorn. And what do they have? Was it Where? At Georgia Bar downtown. Oh, I never. Bermuda Triangle. I never really drank there. It was across from Georgia Theater. They had popcorn. You could put cayenne on it. And across from the Georgia Theater. Yeah, the side. The side of the Georgia Theater. Oh, to the side it was of behind it. Behind the uh, Globe. Behind the Globe. Anyway, they also had peanuts or something. It was oh, it was the 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 peanuts and the shells. I thought the place on the ground floor of the Southern Mutual building was the Georgia Bar. That was the CNS building? No, no, no. CNS building is across from uh, Georgia Theater. The Fred building. The Southern, Mutu the Southern Mutual That's building. That's up across from Chocolate Shop. Yeah, but I thought that the Georgia Bar... No. No. What was it called that on the ground floor that when you first walked in? Athens that, Bar? I don't know what that was. I city can't. Bar? City Bar. Maybe it was City Bar. It was a little more posh. It had everything oh, polished yeah. brass <clears throat> and mirrored behind the bar. And I remember going in there and speaking French with my French classmates. And Oh, God. Um, just bullshit. Yeah. You remember um, the Odyssey and... Um, Uptown Lounge and all those places used to exist back then. I remember them, but I'm having a hard time. Which one was across from the opening to Georgia Theater? Was that Odyssey? Odyssey was um, around the corner, as I recall, from the well, Georgia Theater. What was the one across the street? It was always so I mean, you couldn't get in. It was just slammed in there. I mean, you press skin to skin with people. I think that was the Uptown Lounge. That was further down. No, Uptown was around the corner where 80s Bar became, right? Right, yeah. Yeah. So maybe Odyssey was the one across from... God, I have no idea. It's been so long. It's been 30, 40 years. Mm-hmm. Christ, on a stick, man. I never liked drinking in bars. I didn't like the atmosphere, and I didn't like paying the extra money. Um... 
a lot of my gay friends like going to cheap bars. A lot of my towny friends like going to cheap bars. There was this one that Ed Tant and I used to go to down from Pepino's, that area. And that one, you'd go out the back door, down the alley, and end up at the back door at the George Bar. And then the Globe was on the front corner, so they called that the Bermuda Triangle. <laughs> you would go from bar to bar to bar throughout the night. And I was living right off downtown at that point. I could stagger home if I wanted to. Yeah, so. Yeah. There was a place that was underground. Um, Jesus, you're not talking about toppers when it was a dance hall, are you? No, no. Um, can't think what's there now. But um, you remember where Lee's Wigs was? Yeah. yeah. Okay, a couple stores to the left. There were staircases that led downstairs under the sidewalk. Okay. And at one time, one half of it was something, and the other half was a bar. Flanagan's was across the street from the, the Macy's building. Uh, and yeah. it had a down, downstairs bar also. Uh, yeah. It was different, and that's where I got to hear Mike Mills play one night. He did that Feel It In My Fingers song, you know. But I can't remember the name of that place. Yeah, I don't know. Just uh, all that time period. Then there was the fundraiser where REM showed up at Georgia Theater. And they did that um, song, Feels Like an Earthquake. They're, they're rattling all this stuff off. And they had the set sheet up there on top of a stool. And he's doing all these different lines to the song that are all related to the fundraiser and the community. Mm. And that was cool. I also saw um, Rahiara there at that theater, at Georgia Theater. Rather. I saw a bunch of cool stuff at the Georgia Theater. Yeah. Um, well, no, I think about it, maybe not that many. What was that band out of, it was one of those grunge bands, Screaming Trees? A lot of big name bands have played there. When I worked at UGA the first time, um, the the whatever buildings were in or next to the south furthest most parking lot, that was part of my route. The, the what they had built that that new biochemistry building. Anyway. <clears throat> Right around the ta time I was delivering to Tucker Hall every day, there would be this sometimes this girl walking across the parking lot to the biochemistry building, and she had monstrous breasts. And I became obsessed with her. And Tell I, me more! Anyway, the point is, <laughs> anyway, I found out all about her, because I found out she was a grad student at the genetics lab or something. Uh -huh. Anyway, so I was at the Georgia Theater one day, I think it was when we went to see, my old girlfriend and I went to see the Kiss uh, cover band. Oh, Jesus. And I went to the bar to get a, get a drink, and this girl was behind the bar uh, working. And I just couldn't believe it. Did you throw all of her money into uh, all of your money into her tip jar? <laughs> no. Here, here. No. I, Pull that shirt down a little bit more. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm notoriously cheap, so, you know. You remember the time that you went to UGA and there was a woman there that had enormous breasts and you went back and told one of the guys at the post office mm -hmm. and he made a special trip down there to see her boobs. The guy had never set foot anywhere near a library prior to that. <laughs> yeah, but these were... The, the, the chick at the library, her breasts were just big, fat, you know... Sloppy? Yeah. Is that what you called them? I think that's what you called it. But this chick that worked at, or was a grad student, she was totally different. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I became a B cup after I had kids. She, <laughs> she had this like Linda McCartney nineteen seventy one mullet type haircut. Oh fuck, man. Yeah, and um. You know she was probably a lesbian. No. No. Yeah. No way. Yeah, that's it. You were a lesbian. <laughs> no. Oh, Lord. 
I can't believe how stupid men are. I was Trust me, women can be equally stupid. When I was keeping up with my cousin Tanya, she went to those male reviews that are based on that movie Mike's Mad Mike yeah. something. Magic Mike, yeah. Yeah. She went to reviews of those and would post video clippets on her um, social media feed. And I would look at them and go, I just don't get this. And here she was just pawing at them. I'm like, Jesus Christ. I know. Sometimes they put whipped cream on their dicks and have the women suck it, suck the whipped cream off. That was never in any of her social media feeds. Yeah, I don't get it. I don't know how this isn't, you know. It's America. The... the... <laughs> Oh, and the same person that does that will turn around and vote for Trump the next day. Hey, Tanya would never vote for Trump. She's a good Democrat, progressive girl. Hey, let it run. i got to go get my other cup of tea. Oh, you let it run. Well, I mean, say something while I'm gone. Something while you're gone. Something uh, while I'm gone. Is that the way? Christ, Lance. So, you're back on the caffeine now, and you're having issues because you're fucking with your sleep schedule. You get to tell everybody about that, okay? What do you go through? Like 20 bags of tea a night? Or is it more like 40 bags of tea? Can't keep it going here. You're you're not moving fast enough to get back in here. Come tell us about your tea consumption. We're not going to talk about my tea consumption. Oh, we're not. No. Right. Mm-hmm. Oh, 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 I may have to go blow my nose in a minute, too. Jesus. I can't breathe properly. You'd be like one of those men who stays mic'd while they go to the bathroom. <laughs> hmm. I had that recently. They said there was some... I was at the Supreme Court. They got caught. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Jesus. Oh, me. Well, what else did we talk about yesterday? I honestly have no idea. My brain is dead. You talked about your week at work as usual. We talked about the fact that you uh, are filing a couple of grievances. And uh, some of it has to do with the fact they've been switching you between sick leave and annual leave. You'll choose one based on how much accumulated sick leave you have and how much annual leave you need to reserve. Because you have another week off in November at the end. So you're to the point where if they do it again, you're not going to have enough time to take off. So they've got to reverse some of this shit. And uh, we talked about the fact you got so tired your last night working, you couldn't even remember what time you got off work. Yeah, that was weird. It's like being half asleep while you're walking around. Oh... Me. I hate my job. I just hate it. Hate it. Such a waste of time. I should have become a drifter. <laughs> there is still a chance, young man. Would you like to go live under the bridge like a common troll? I'm tied to civilization. I have to have certain pres- prescription medicines. and Yeah, and you have to have a certain amount of um, modern conveniences. The mod cons we lost during the storm, like, you know, power and hot water. Yeah. Had you running to the uh, hotel on the second night of the power outage. I wish you'd been with me. We could have stayed in that uh, that first hotel. It was nice. Two queens. The power came on 45 minutes after you gave up and came home. I was just... That was a really horrible night, going from, it was depressing, going from hotel to hotel. Yeah, Helene had swept through, that's what we were suffering the effects from. We were lucky, I mean, by the third day we were back powered up, and then all these people started coming from Tennessee and North and South Carolina and parts of Georgia and Florida seeking hotels. The occupancy rate was like 95% or something in the state of Georgia for hotels. Even your sister took off and went somewhere with her husband and her and your mother. It seemed like every hotel that I checked out that night um, served breakfast the next morning. And that was unheard of when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. I mean, a lot of places like... We, we always stayed at 
Holiday Inns, and they always had a restaurant attached, but it wasn't part of your yeah. Bell. Yeah, Peter's gonna go to a wedding over in West Georgia this next weekend, and he is staying in a Comfort Inn, and the hotel offers the breakfast bar, I guess, with a waffle and stuff, and that's one of the reasons I chose it, <laughs> along with a couple of queen beds and yeah, all the other conveniences. That and it's about 15 minutes from the wedding venue. Oh, Lord. I'm trying to think how many weddings I've been to. So many. I haven't been to that many. I think the last one I may have gone to was... I was living in Haiti at the time. My housemate was getting married. She was in a nurse in charge of the OBGYN ward. And her husband was one of the doctors slash surgeons there. And I helped her plan her wedding. She was marrying a native guy. And his mom showed up with all these flowers and they were just... Oh my God, it was like neon things. And she goes, can you please help me? And so she and I completely redid the, the floral decorations. And uh, the mother was ooing and all and they weren't insulted. Because, you know, we were living under an embargo and they had to put up with what they could. The flowers were beautiful. It's just that they had put these neon green and neon yellow glitter ribbons on them. I caught the tail end, or not, I didn't really, I just sort of walked through years ago. Some hippies were having a wedding down at the shoreline in Key West. It was really weird. <clears throat> just they had stuff wrapped around the trees um there's not there's no beach in Key West it's just rocks and um there's an area that they've sort of I don't know how they did it bricked it off so that you can sort of walk out into the water but you have to keep your shoes on because you don't know what in the hell's out there mm -hmm. coral or or be so yeah yeah but um it'd be fun to take you down there like the coldest part of the year because that's the only time you could ever stand it down there yeah even then it's going to be 85 degrees or something who knows I mean, you know the water around florida last year the water was 100 degrees you can't even cool off going in the water anymore i don't know how I mean, because I couldn't do that. I mean, I don't know if I could sleep today in a hot room like that. But down there, I slept in a hot room a whole week. You guys didn't have an air conditioning unit? There was like a little... It was an old house that had been converted into a hotel. And they had like a little tiny window unit for this pretty big room. Um, they gave us a free upgrade to one of the bedrooms at the back of the hotel. And uh, there was like a little kitchen... No stove, though. And there was, uh, it was like, I don't know, like a, like a suite almost, really. I'm suddenly envisioning a take on one of the old Poirot shows we used to watch, mm -hmm. where someone revisits a place 30 or 40 years later, and the people recognize them there, and they've been holding a grudge for 30 or 40 years, and the, pe the guests die, and Poirot has to un unveil... When they were here before, they were such rude guests. And I'm thinking that's what would happen if we went back to that place. You know, it's been so long ago that nobody there would remember me. Everybody that worked there before is, is gone or dead now. Oh, what a weird hotel. It was a big gay mecca, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. And the hotel was a gay, gay hotel. And... um but it was the cheapest rate I, I found. Thought I thought you were the ugliest woman they'd ever seen. <laughs> uh, God, everybody. It was like Sodom, man. It really was. It was just... Are we talking about G-string bikinis in the pool? I'm talking about just basically I mean, the people boys. getting <laughs> hammered drunk and then going off to fuck. Christ. Well, you were among them, so I guess you fit in. Yeah. That was the butter story, right? Yeah. Um, I didn't have much. I was paying for everything, and I didn't have much money. So 
about halfway through the week, I realized we're gonna we're not gonna be able to keep going at this rate. So we went. There's a Sears in Key West, and it's about as big as this living room. It's mainly a place to pick up orders, or back it was back then. Anyway, um, they had a few products in there, and I got a hot plate on my Sears card, and we cooked in the room uh, the rest of the week just to save money. But you need oil when you cook on those hot plates. Right. So we, I, there was like a fish market down at the shoreline further up the road, up US-1, and I bought like a big, great big bag of uh, rock shrimp, and then... There was a kitchen in the hotel, so I went down to the kitchen. And I said, Can, "Do you have any butter I could?" <laughs> and the guy gave me a massive slab of butter on a plate, and he goes, "Don't do anything with it. I wouldn't do." Oh, and then starts humming the tune to "Last Tango in Paris." <laughs> and I kept that plate for years, and it got lost somewhere. Somebody threw it away or something. Don't look at me. You know your blue and white wear. It was like that, but it was pink and white. Ew. Or red and white, whatever. And uh, anyway, uh, I think I tallied up how much I drank that week, and it wound up being like 96 beers, plus God knows whatever 96 else. 96 beers on the wall. 96 beers on the wall. <laughs> Jesus. How many kegs would that be? I have to wonder. Oh, uh, Lord. I, I just, I hate Florida. I don't know what. Oh, dear. I don't know why anybody lived down there. If we had our place down there, our home insurance would be fifteen to $20,000 a year. It's so hot and sticky down there, and everything is that white sand, and it's, it's far inland. I don't know. It's not my thing. Yeah. My stepmom's brother lives down there, and when their mother got sick, they moved her into a condo assistant living condo facility in Deland. It's near Orlando, where he was working at the time. But that my, my folks used to go down there, and they had to make the most of it, because, you know, it was an obligation. Once or twice a year, they'd go down and visit her mom and his her brother. And my dad tells these stories about getting a centrally located hotel so that you could walk to all the restaurants and you could stagger home after having 32 ounce margaritas. <laughs> That's what you do in Florida. You drink, you get baked. <laughs> I don't, uh, yeah. Um, what's the long, you and I went to Charleston when the kids were little. Yeah. I, that was I, the best vacation we have had. So, yeah, that was that was nice. I would like to redo that. But um, maybe have the kids take their partners with them and go to the same places. Mm. Like they had that animal safari place. Without us. I mean, oh, the whole family. All the, oh, I don't know if I want to travel with uh, strangers. No, they, they did our family of Fruit Loop. We did all, all go in separate vehicles and... Just have a hotel that everybody was in the same hotel and meet for breakfast every morning and say what they were doing. And maybe agree to go out to dinner that night or something. I don't we know. We didn't find that burrito place. Remember that burrito place? Yeah. It was awesome. It was at sea level. Yeah. So when you popped open the bottle of Coke, the bubbles were perfect. And they had a tray on top of one area that was filled with, it must have been 20 or 30 hot sauces. Yeah. It was so good. We could go out on the boat again, and maybe Peter wouldn't try to walk off the edge. And we went out to the York Town also. Do you remember they had that? We, there was like a giant door open on the side of the aircraft carrier. Yes, that's with, where Peter almost walked With just a chain it. across it. It was so incredibly stupid. And I'm out grabbing the children, don't go over there. And then he almost walked off the side of the damn ferry boat, or not ferry, it was a cruise it was like ship a around the harbor, yeah. where you run, went around some kind of historical monument or something. Fort Sumter. Ah, is that what it was? I think it's a ferry. I think it counts as a ferry. What? You can have ferries that aren't car, car, uh, vehicle, vehicle carrying. carrying yeah. And But I don't think they let you off on the island, though, did we? 
No, but it's still a ferry. Um, it's still that kind of a boat, excursion boat, I guess we you'd went say. To some other historical site where there are like bunkers and stuff. And we went to that wonderful museum that had a giant whale, whale skeleton. And they also had the old Confederate submarine that they had just unearthed at that point. Mm -hmm. They had dredged it out and had it on display. And it was shocking to see the two or three men in this thing. It didn't look like it fit our family of four. And we had two wee ones. Uh, yeah, that was a... Um, that, that one mission that sub went on was successful. It was basically to sneak across to some other boat and plant a mine on it, and that was it. Oh. But I think that the submarine sank as well. Hmm. I can't remember. We were there a full week. It was really nice. Yeah. yeah, but you had to cook in the room. I did have to cook in the room. That was not, not nice. And I got really frustrated with having to do it, and I finally said, that's it. I'm going to go find the Wendy's. And I came back, and everybody snarfed down baked potatoes and salad and breadsticks. Oh, it was so good. It was so nice not having to cook in the room. We bought a hot plate and took along cook cookware and such. And we went to a Publix there. One night we stopped. We, were, we went up to Tybee Island. You had to cross over. And we, we could only be out there for so long because the bridge closed to non-residents at a certain hour. So we we're returning from Foley. We stopped in at a Publix, and it was Halloween night. That's right. And we were going to pick up some groceries, and they had trick-or-treating. So the kids got to go through the store and get little treats. I forgot about that. And then we went home, and we watched monster movies. Yeah, you know, I think... Home, I mean the hotel. I think that trip is what convinced, <laughs> convinced us to get cable when we got home. Because kids the kids watch watched Nickelodeon Rugrats. a lot. They watched Rugrats. They watched all those monster movies. They watched Zoom and Maybe. some other PBS things. Maybe, I don't remember. And you were fond of Zoom, I think, from childhood or something. I never got to see it that often, but it was always so appealing. So we tried to get cable for that few years. And then when we moved in here, it was like not even two years later. And we said, that's it, we're cutting the cord. And they're like... What? You're leaving? Yes, we're leaving. And we haven't had cable since then. I haven't looked back. We had satellite briefly. I guess maybe Not here. No, but next door. That satellite dish is still up there. We had cable because I remember somebody from the cable company came and said, you're illegally getting cable. I said, no, we're not. Because they said, come in. I've got the receipts. And I showed him. I said, he said, you're paying this to what company? And, I, and I, he took copies of it and stuff. Ends up another company had claimed that the lines were theirs. And he said, well, we've got cable. We can switch you over to your name, but we've got a better deal. So we'll put you on satellite, and you'll just be considered customers already. So that's what it was. Okay. Yeah. So it started off as cable, and it went to satellite because somebody was... Mixed up something or another. Yeah. Um, mm, I'm sleepy again. I don't know why. Um, I don't either. You slept, what, 10 hours? Today? Yeah, let me see what time it is. I may have to go to the bathroom. Yes, announce it. Well, I gotta blow my nose. Uh, All right, we're at 33 minutes. What do you want to do? Well, you want to call it quits for the night since you're tired and it's already been half an hour. All right, I guess that's about it. I can't remember all what we talked about yesterday. There's a bunch of more interesting stuff. <laughs> Probably some political stuff. Uh, okay, right. that's about it. All right. Bye.